The television weather report is the most universal experience of science. Knowing how these reports developed really helps us to understand how the public understands science. In my research, I discovered that comic art has been a foundation of television weather broadcasts since they began in the late 1940s. Surprisingly, a central reason for this lies in World War II military training techniques. During the war, millions of draftees from all sorts of backgrounds had to learn the unfamiliar tasks and information required to wage a modern war. This, of course, included meteorology. Pilots had to know about the weather in order to fly safely and effectively. But most pre-war meteorology teaching materials were college textbooks. They were hard for pilots to understand, since pilots were chosen for their physical and mental agility, not their academic backgrounds. So military meteorologists used the comics to teach pilots. This is because, of course, during the 1930s, just like today, comic strips were the most commonly read parts of a newspaper. One paper even conducted an experiment by not delivering different sections. 88% of people complained when the comics weren't delivered, but only 5% complained about not getting the main news section. The comics were also one of the few parts of the newspaper that everybody read, from doctors and lawyers to auto mechanics and day laborers. So, military training divisions created comic books and comic illustrations, and they used them to help new pilots understand issues like icing conditions, fog, and thunderstorms. And some of the cartoonists drawing these manuals actually had advanced meteorological training. Many of the manuals had comic strip elements, like recurring characters and panel images, and they also personified objects, like clouds and airplanes. They were pretty funny, too, and they used a lot of caricature. The idea here was that you could laugh at the characters' follies and learn to avoid them without feeling like you were being made fun of personally. You also see a lot of references to pop culture, like Mae West or other pinup girls. After the war, many of the first generation of TV weathermen were ex-military meteorologists. As they invented how to present the weather, they used the same styles that they had developed to talk to pilots before a flight. They created simple maps with just the highs, the lows, and the storm fronts. They drew cartoon suns and pictograms of rain. And, to keep viewers' attention, many invented cartoon characters. Viewers in Tulsa, Oklahoma, for instance, laughed at the antics of Gusty, who was drawn by the former military weatherman Don Woods. Now, while most cartoon characters disappeared from TV weather reports in the 1960s, as weather news became more serious, to this day, elements of comic art are still central to how we visualize the weather. We still understand the weather through the integration of images and text. I think that studying history helps us to realize how much the past is still with us. Even as we confront climate change today, we learn about the day's weather from a format that was invented to keep pilots safe during World War II. I think that's amazing.